Hey, what's going on? This is the video for Solo Overland Overnight. We're gonna be doing three nights of camping, overlanding, off-roading, hiking, exploring, cooking, all that kind of good stuff. Hanging out with dogs. It's late May here and the high desert is getting hot. It's around mid 80s here during the day, no wind, hot sun, next couple of days forecast. So we're gonna go up in the high country. All of my other videos on this channel have been in the desert, at least the last year of videos. So this is gonna be the first one where we're in the forest and we're gonna be going to a special part of the forest. I know this forest well too, when I first moved here, I think I spent around three or four months just camping in this forest, going back and forth between different spots. So we're gonna go up, we're gonna get some cool weather. We're gonna do some overlanding, some camping. All right, rolled up to the first camp here, first scout camp. You're gonna see what's here. There's a pond. You feel already got in it. But there's bugs, there's mosquitoes around my hand already. But I do have bug nets, so that's the drawback of pond water or lake water is there'll be bugs. So I'm just scouting this area out. And it wasn't that treacherous to get in here, but it also wasn't that friendly. This area of forest got burned by a forest service negligent burn or negligent prescribed burn where they just burned half the forest down so all the pines are scarred they're black thankfully it's not too dense here so the the fire didn't burn the whole forest down but this is our scout here that's the way it goes when you first go to a new area and you're looking for a place to camp like you gotta accept the fact that you're gonna be looking for a good spot for, you know, for a good amount of time. You can see mosquitoes trying to swarm there. Wind is picking up though, so hopefully these bugs will go away. Yeah, I'm switching this area. Check this out. That is a black bear paw. Same size as my hand, I guess. 250, 300 pound bear. Definitely fresh. All right, I'm out here. New hiking pole. Four star one, one that's split on me here. So, this is salt cedar, natural grip. I've decided to do a scout hike around my camp. That road coming in was real shitty. But, as I go up this road, it gets better. And flatter here. There's an old fire pit here. That saves a lot of work hauling rocks for fire. A lot of deadwood around. You! Big girl. All right, this is gonna be the camp spot. Moved it up from that swamp. I thought it was gonna be a good spot for my dog to keep her cool, but it was more swampy than lakey. So we're up here on this ridge. Started building my pit here. Gonna build it two by two by two. That's 
the legal size. Fire restrictions take effect in eight days, I think. So I'm gonna be careful. I'm gonna dig it out and just put the dirt on the rock. Obviously there's been a fire here, so this area is fire prone to a lot of dead wood everywhere. And we're walking around camp collecting rocks. This camp, very seldom used. A lot of pine needles around. And I saw this can here. Check out this old can. Budweiser. Real old, so not a very uh, high traffic area here for sure. So glad I'm up here. The hiking looks pretty gnarly. A lot of ridges, a lot of uh, gorges. But up here on the plateau, might be a couple good miles to hike. So <clears throat> good spot, gonna set up here, make fire, make dinner, a lot of dead wood. So not too much work to do. Ready dinner served. Got some corn, some store bought chicken, some potato salad, and some uh, soda. Got some honey mustard, barbecue sauce. Still got maybe an hour or some. Good morning. It's around nine o'clock in the morning. Had a pretty decent night's sleep. Kind of that first night you get to the woods. That first night is kind of like an adjustment night for sleep. Just tossing and turning for the first couple hours. But it was nice and not cold, not too windy. It was a slight, slight breeze, so nice and cool to sleep in. And now I'm gonna make breakfast. I'm gonna make a little fire. We have a bagel, two eggs, some coffee, and then we're going to do some exploring. All right, I got Gypsy over there harassing a chipmunk. And what I'm doing here with my fire situation is I'm just clearing out all this. This is called Gambler Oak, and it's all dead. A lot of the pines are dead around here, too. So I'm kind of just clearing everything around my camp being fire safe instead of just picking big logs I'm just clearing brush and burning it. it makes this area more fire safe frankly what do you got over there G good job Jill game G he caught breakfast G dude so this is my cooler this is a Stanley cooler from REI it's kind of like that Yeti uh 
Yeti competitor. It's the expensive Stanley. It's around 100 bucks. But inside, I dry bagged everything just because uh, I don't want any water getting into like my good stuff, like my cheese or my butter. I want all that stuff to stay really dry. And without dry bags, it's kind of tough to keep it all dry. Like that water gets into everything and you really don't want water in like your butter. Like see how dry that is. But from experience, I've seen this cooler keep ice for around five days. So I'm going to be here for around three days. So the main thing is also to keep it really closed. If it's not really closed shut, then the air will get in there and then it'll melt all your ice. And then it'll start spoiling your food. So it is uh, almost summertime here. It's late May, so definitely you want to keep this thing uh, clean. Otherwise, like three days after, this clue will, will look like that ring video. You'll look in here and it'll just be like, everything will be wet and soggy and wasted. So you don't want that. Okay, working on breakfast here. Going to have two eggs. This is a cheese bagel. Some butter. And coffee so I'm using this uh, stand here this thing works well you can either use the fold outs or you can just fold them in and then just plant your grate right on the fire and it works well good for toasting too you know you can just put everything on top of here toast it like veggies or bagels whatever and these are skillets This is a flat plate skillet. This is a cook skillet. Okay, breakfast. Got some organic French roast coffee. Two eggs, ketchup, cheese bagel, butter. Yuf has some hamburger meat, some cheese. Yuf. She also has some willow water. It's good for inflammation. How big, girl? But yeah, we're all trying to keep it cool. Staying in the shade here of the Forerunner. And I gotta say, typical Overland. I think we need that awning. The spring winds have subsided. Yeah, the spring wind, winds here suck. They're pretty consistent and high. And then they kind of go away. So an awning would not be that good in a high windstorm. You know, it's a kind of a pain in the ass. It thrashes around. But when it's sunny, that awning gives you a good amount of shade. So I think when I get home, I'm going to install my awning for the next trip. But anyway. Jips lost her collar an hour ago. She had bells on it. I'm not sure what happened to it. But she had it for a good year or two, so well, I'll keep an eye out for it somewhere around camp. Do a little day hike. Got a new trucking along. It is getting hot though. But there's some clouds, there's some wind coming through. But not a very Exciting hike. This forest is kind of depressing because a lot of it is burned down. So you kind of see the damage of what a wildfire looks like. It's not very fun to hike through. But these trees are resilient. You can see they've been burned to here. But up here they're still green. They're growing. So it's good to see that. Yeah, everything that way is high desert. Everything this way is uh, high country mountains. So. This is kind of like a transition zone. What do you got, Jip?
All right, been hiking around. Need some cool clouds. Hopefully this won't be a monsoon. If it is, it'll be kind of the, one of the early ones of the season. But been doing a walkabout. Like in Australia, they kind of walk around the outback, wander around. No GPS, just kind of around camp, scouting, seeing where there's good access. <clears throat> and it's getting hot, so my lab, she's warm. So we're gonna go back to the truck. I'm gonna cool her off, throw some water on her, hydrate her up. And I'm gonna leave her in my truck with the windows down. And then I'm gonna go hiking with Gypsy. A little bit where it's more dangerous. So yeah, my lab is old, so she can't deal with the heat. She got a good hike in. She'll get a hike at night. She's just gonna chill out. Hadi, your hip is gimped up, but she's still pushing. Back at camp here. We got a chopper coming through. Get in the chopper. Get in the chopper. Not sure what that is. It looks civilian. Not too windy, so pretty good flying. Okay, you made some lunch. Get some tuna, bumblebee tuna, and some mayo, and some stone ground mustard white bread, uh, some Swiss cheese here, glazed potato chips, and some store-bought cola. Definitely the hottest part of the day right now. The wind is coming through, so we need to chow down, and then we're gonna go on a hike. Okay, we got my truck ready for Newf. Got some water, a piece of chicken over there. This is what I'm taking on my hike, taking my GPS, in a nine millimeter handgun with a full magazine, <clears throat> a holster, simple knife. This is a Wally World Ozark Trail. Nice knife, nice and light, it's serrated. It's got paracord for utility. It's a nice little knife, it's super light. And I have a <clears throat> two liter uh, Coke bottle with water and that's pretty much it. And we got a bunch of clouds coming up, so I'm gonna try to do a three hour hike off trail, something like that. Let new V hang out in the car during the midday sun. What do you think, Debs? You ready to lounge? Big girl. What do you got, Jet? Got a scroll up there. You got Gypsy down here. What's up there, Jet? Get him, G. What's up there, G? Get him, Jill. It's my little Jill. <laughs> you guys see him? He's right there. Ah, there he goes. That is a Richardson ground squirrel, I think. Those are open all year round, small game hunting. But you know, they're tiny, it's hot. If it was winter time and it's cold, you know, if I was wanting a treat for my dogs, I would definitely take them. He's kind of stupid, he's right there. I just shoot him with my nine. But it's hot. I don't have my small game license yet for this year. I have my fishing, but I didn't buy my small game. Small game starts in November 1st here, but there's exceptions like this guy here. He's open year round. So is uh, Eurasian Dove is open year round. But yeah, he's definitely a cool little squirrel. Hey buddy.
This is real pretty. This section survived. It's not totally burned out like that one over there. Mostly it's all kind of burned on this side. I'm at exactly 7900 for the start. And right about 885, eight, you start to see Aspen. So if I go up a little bit up, I'm gonna see Aspen. Otherwise I'll be down here with uh, Pine, Douglas Fir, and this is Gambler Oak. What do you think, Jip? Gypsy has Newfie's collar on. She lost hers earlier, so. It's a hot one. <clears throat> Sun is winning today. Saw some clouds, but they went towards the big high country, so. Getting hot. This is serviceberry, I think. Serviceberry bloom. This also is an old dam. You can see there's an old water source here. A bunch of old cut trees that look like they've been in water. So they probably had some ranching going on here. Built some uh, little ponds for cows and stuff. Yeah, I'm trying to go in the shade now because the more I'm exposed, the more tired I'm getting. So I'm trying to get in the shade of the trees here. But it's still midday sun, it's around one. What do you got, Jip? Jip's onto something. But anyway, this is a uh, service berry. And obviously this is where there's water here because the plant life changes drastically. Like everything there is pine and oak and some service berry. But here you can see there's patches of willow and more service berry. And a lot of times when you find a water source, you'll find a uh, rosehip berry up here. But I think it's still a little bit too low for rosehip. So I think a 500 feet, 1,000 foot elevation gain would again change the plant life. But yeah, cool. Cool little spot, obviously dammed up. They had some heavy machinery here. And that road is about 20 yards from here, so... They were maintaining it originally probably for ranching. A lot of grass here, obviously, for cows. Yeah, I wonder if you dug out a little hole, if you would find water here. Red tail hawk. There'll be a nest around here. I'm right on the ridge, right in the gorge. They typically nest along the ridges. Deer! He's not shy. He should run away. Get out of here, bub! Out of here! Can't be looking at humans. Don't shoot you, bub. Go! Get out of here! Yeah, he's not scared. She's not scared. That's a black-tailed deer.
getting real thick here with the gambler oak getting kind of boxed in so I'm going towards the ridge as you see it opens up over there slow going with this much oak but this is all gambler oak it produces acorns in the fall so they're easy to replant and they're obviously sprawling all through here they're dominating so <clears throat> well, you could use it for firewood you could cut it green use it for hobby wood but yeah this section is still a lot of fire damage in this section thankfully it's thick with pine so it'll recover but if another fire came through here yeah, this, this forest is way too vulnerable. So we're going towards that ridge just to get some more open hiking just because everything here is real thick. Kind of bushwhacking here. I'm on GPS, about 45 minutes away from the forest road that I connected on. But hiking is pretty good here. Not too steep, not too much up and down. Kind of just rolling little hills and spots. So it's a good hike for the midday sun. Yeah, these ridges have more wind too, so it's another good factor of catching the ridge during the summertime. So this ridge goes in and goes back out on that side. So I'll have to go back in on this side. I'm gonna hug kind of this open side. Let's see everything's moving. There's a breeze here. That breeze is helping out a lot for sure. That whole section, my guess is that it's too steep for stuff to grow. And that fire knocked everything down. All those pines are standing deads. Down there, there's water. That's a natural fire break. A lot of times fire can't jump the water or a road, or whatever. But natural fire breaks are good. They prevent wildfire from spreading. That's how this fire actually couldn't spread. On that far side, probably 10 miles that way, there's a, not 10 miles, maybe five miles. There's a paved road and that fire couldn't jump the paved road. So it saved that whole side of the forest. It had no fire at all.
getting some rocks here, some rock outcrop. Good places for dens. Very thick brush everywhere, not good hiking. So I'm trying to stay up here on this little plateau and then skirt inside here. And then if I see something cool, I'll just come down. <clears throat> but definitely pretty treacherous hiking. What's what's up, Jeb? Oh, we, got, we got an alert. Probably the best way down from this ridge is through here. And there's water further up the gorge. Not too treacherous to come down here. But we're going to still stay up here. We're not going to push it too hard today. Kind of acclimating to the elevation. First forest camp in a bit. So what do you think, Jet? We're not pushing it too hard. But if I saw water right there, I might go down there. But right now, I'm enjoying hiking this little ridge. It's still hot, which is good. There's no monsoons, clouds up there. But we look all right, so. Are you checking in? It's 3.15. Oh, there's a turkey vulture right there. Look at that. Cool. Probably a dead animal around here. <clears throat> but anyway, I'm going to check in here, do a little video. There's a 14er view over here. So glad to be getting some sun. Knock off that pale complexion. But definitely got some moving clouds, so... Gonna start heading back towards the war rig. Checking in. Almost 3.15. Got a bunch of turkey vultures around here. But what's going on here is that is a 14er. That is a three peak 14er. A 14er with sister peaks. That is a 13er. As you can see, they're all still snow capped. But what I'm concerned with now is that I got a bunch of clouds coming up the ridge here. And if these clouds merge with those clouds, then we got a problem. It's early monsoon season here, but you know, lightning will crack out here. It's also a cause of fires here is lightning. So you gotta be careful. Once these black clouds start showing up, Still early in the afternoon, as it kind of heats up, it could create a storm, and I would have to find shelter. Thankfully, there's a lot of rocks here if I had to, but truck is the best shelter for sure. So I'm gonna start heading back now. A lot of water. It's getting hot, or it is hot, and yeah, I don't want to get caught out by these storm clouds. It would be an amateur move. But real pretty here. Back at camp, made a fire, I'm gonna cook some potatoes. 
This entire side of the forest is covered in clouds. That concerns me right there. So hopefully these clouds stay that way, that way. Don't come towards me, but we'll see. If we have to, I'll have to hunker down. If there's a storm, there's a bunch of deadfall all around me, standing deads from the fire. So if the wind picks up, I'll have to have my forerunner set up where I can move it away from everything, like the trees. There's like, there's no trees up there, so I'll just go up there, park, wait the storm out. What do you think, Gyps? Gyps is dirt bagging it, Gyp. Good job, G. Good job, G. Bigger. You have to stay away from the smoke and the fire. Potatoes take about an hour to boil, so. Yeah, I don't like that at all, that cloud right there. Wind is starting to pick up, but it looks like they all kind of go towards the big high country, these clouds, so we'll see. Okay, I've boiled down my corn and I only have one uh, top for a pot. So I leave the corn inside the wrapping so all the fire ash doesn't get to it. Like you see there's some on it now, so I'll just take that off. And the potatoes, they've been boiling for a good hour. So now I'm gonna strain the potatoes, mash them up, and I'm gonna also cut up some onions. Alrighty, got my mashed potatoes all done. Forgot my uh, potato thingy. But anyway, this is just potato, a quarter of a stick of butter, and some milk. And it turns out really good, nice and soft, nice and fluffy mash. And I got some onions going over there in the pan. Got the corn on the side there. So the onions I'll use as a garnish for this. And we'll have fried chicken store so camp made mash camp made corn and store-bought chicken so pretty good deal dogs are chilling it's cooling down it's 5 13 hanging out here listening to some Howard Stern got some uh, service looking forward to dinner Gonna hunker down my camp because that cloud keeps scaring the shit out of me. So we'll eat, we'll hunker down a little bit, put everything that could get dry away, electronics, or everything that could get wet away or damaged by the rain, I'll put that away. I got a bunch of electronics out, a bunch of like clothes and stuff. So I'm just gonna put that all in the forerunner just in case I get caught out out here. I could just hunker down in the truck if it starts to rain here, there's a high chance that it'll be thunder and lightning too. And those clouds look dark and nasty, so the boogeyman usually comes at night here in the forest, so we'll prepare for that. Maybe we'll get a hike in down that little ridge over there. But we'll see. I'm just enjoying this overland camp. I think I hiked around seven miles today, my guess. So taking it easy, doing some nice camp chores, cleaning up this little camp spot, taking all the gambler oak out of it, knocking all the brush down, making a little bit more fire safe here. So enjoying this camp. So I'm just warming this up now. I'm watching this closely. I don't want this to get burned. The onions are starting to look good. Corn's already cooked, so I'm just throwing some kind of skillet flavor on it. I'm 
I don't mind cold chicken either, but when you're cooking a meal where the potatoes are hot, the corn is hot, the wind is blowing, it's starting to get a little darker now. Good warm chicken is tastes better than cold chicken, frankly. So I'm gonna warm up the chicken, get some barbecue sauce, get some honey mustard, and we'll have dinner. Alrighty, dinner's served. Got some corn in the cob, some organic barbecue, some honey mustard. This is a chicken thigh. Got a chicken wing over there in the fire. We got some onions, garnish with some sugar and some butter and some mashed potatoes. Corn in the cob, boiled and then skilleted for a little bit. Got a store-bought Coca-Cola. That's cold from the uh, cooler and it's dinner. Happy camp dinner. Alrighty, back at camp here. Getting a little tea fire going, some smoke for the bugs. So I'm doing some woodcraft here, got a saw. This is a Stormfell Juniper. And I'm just gonna take this top right here. I'm just gonna take that and carve a hiking pole out of it. It's a lot of branches to work through, that kind of stuff. Okay, I've topped this Stormfell Juniper, limbed most of it, and <clears throat> using my old hiking pole as kind of a gauge. So I got the size I want. This dude is thick here, so a lot of carving to do. But Juniper is a rare green. Like this is probably a year or two old. Didn't last the winter, so it got knocked over right in this road here. So Forest Service will come clear this out, chop it up, etc. So I'm just going to take this treetop off it and turn it into a hiking pole. Could use it for firewood too, but juniper is not the best for firewood, especially if you have tons of dead pine everywhere, standing dead. Juniper has a lot of limbs on it, so it's a lot of work. But it makes a good hobby wood. It's really hard doesn't split, doesn't crack, and it's rare too. It's a cool, rare desert wood. It smells sweet too if you burn it. It has a sweet uh, smell to it. So it'll be a cool little craft. This will take a lot of time to carve because it's so thick here. So I'll probably drill a lot of holes in it too, make it lighter. And yeah, this will be a cool carve, cool wood craft. This hiking pole here is cedar. You can see it splits here, but it doesn't matter. It splits, but it doesn't crack at all. I've tried to smash this thing all day today into brush and everything and still hold it up. This is kind of one of my reject uh, hiking poles too, so still holding up nice. I like cedar. Juniper is similar. It's a hardwood, but cedar is invasive here. Juniper is native, so you can cut this green. This you can never cut green. But you can harvest it after it's been knocked down or storm fell or something or standing dead, things like that. So yep. Good morning, Chips. Say hi. Yo, bigger. Yeah. Good morning. This is breakfast. We got whoop. 
We got all hands on deck. We got bagel. I mentioned yesterday I forgot uh, dessert, but I remembered I brought some cherry preserves. So bagel and some cherry preserves, good sugar, some butter, some Swiss cheese. I had two eggs left for today, but one of my eggs broke and made a big mess in the cooler. So thankfully I had everything in dry bags. Otherwise it would have been covered in egg yolk and egg white. But yeah, it's, uh, it's getting hot. There's a red flag warning for today for wind. Low humidity. Uh, we got some coffee here. This is organic French roast. Hi, Jip. Jip's had some chicken for breakfast. You ready to go bonkers today, Jishi? Look for some chipmunks? Hmm? Yeah, today's gonna be the last day, or tomorrow's gonna be the last day, I should say. No, tomorrow's gonna be the last morning, I should say. Today's gonna be the last day here. I'm trying to get some hiking in. See how it goes. There's not that much really cool stuff to explore around here unless i really go dangerous and go into those gorges and ridges and this is not one of those hiker fitness challenges so i don't feel like doing that going to the gorge it's gonna get hot so i kind of want to explore this plateau and look for cool stuff some antlers some bones whatever but we're gonna put some miles on the gps today on this plateau since i know this land a little better and yeah, we're gonna fuel up some breakfast and get going. All right, setting up for my hike here. Keep in mind that legally, when you leave your campsite, you have to make your uh, fire pit uh, close to touch. Like uh, you can put water in there, dirt, like you can see, I can put my hand in there. There's no hot ember. I just usually go with dirt. This is probably 10 pounds of dirt. And then at night, when I come back to make my fire for the evening, this has a rock underneath, so it's kind of easy to dig out. But you still, you have to be mindful. Uh, legally, like if a forest ranger showed up here and I was out hiking uh, or exploring, whatever, and he came to my site and he put his hand in here and this had hot coals or hot embers, I'm pretty sure they can give you a ticket for that. So... It's almost like leaving an unattended uh, fire, kind of the same way. So, thankfully, this has a lot of rock underneath, so there's not that much hot coal. But if this was all dirt, the hot coals kind of have a way of a way of sneaking into these rocks and kind of staying hot, even for days sometimes. So, you definitely want to kind of spread the dirt around. Make sure you put your hand in there. You know, first put a whole bunch of dirt in there or water like i'm not near water if i was near a water source i would just drown this thing but i'm not so i'm just gonna dirt it in so i'm leaving my lab in the truck i will leave her out like i do in the desert but it's hot and there's bears here so she has to stay in the truck i don't want to risk a bear coming into camp and messing with her so she would you know she would bark off but I don't want to take that risk. So, big girl stays in the car. Can you see it? I can't see it. Sounds like the military though. Good to hear the military. That was a social worker with veterans. Homeless veterans, inpatient psych veterans in California for almost five years after my master's. Always good to see the military, hear the military, support their service. Good YouTube channel, Funker 530. It's a great channel for vets. Yeah, I did five years. Went to health social work with soldiers, veterans, men and women of the armed forces. Alrighty, been hiking about. This is the first sign of Aspen. 
So I'm going up an elevation. This is Aspen right here. This didn't survive the winter, obviously, or a storm. The ground here is not that deep. And you can tell that by some of these pines are just stunted. These are old trees, but they're not very tall, not very thick. And that means there's just solid rock underneath, nowhere else to grow. But this is Aspen right here. You can take Chaga off Aspen. Aspen has Chaga. Aspen is, is also one of those woods that produces those produces a lot of burrs so if you have a standing dead aspen a lot of times what will happen is these little knots here they'll kind of burr out and with burr you can carve like you know uh coffee cups like kuskas bowls spoons it's good carving because it's soft and you know aspen's a good wood to carve it's kind of easy to carve and this one's been damaged here a little bit. This is sap or pitch. But once it dies, it produces these big knots. And you'll see that on huge aspens, these huge burrs. And they're hard to, hard to cut off, but they're cool. So these aspens are blooming right now. I think I just saw a golden eagle. Those things are elusive. He's gonna probably fly off. Either it's an eagle or a huge hawk. He's in that tree back there, just chilling. You probably can't see him this far, but you'll see him fly if he flies. Yeah, he's just chilling here. Or she's just chilling here. Open spot. Good way to get chipmunks, rabbits. Definitely a bird of prey. There he goes. Yeah, they're elusive. They're not going to let you get close. Unless there's a nest. If there's a nest, they'll kind of make a big fuss. Jips, what do you have to say for yourself, Jips? Why'd you run back to camp, Jip? Was it an eagle, Jip? What was it? You're an experienced dog, Jip. Come here, Jip. You, you don't have carte blanche, Jip. You can't just run back and do what you want, Jip. Scaring daddy like that. What's up with you? Lost my voice because of you, Jip. Anyway, Jip, good thing you're back. I had faith in you, Jip. You got scared, you got back, you went right back to camp, huh? Maybe it was a bear or something. Anyway, Jip, I'm gonna have to keep you closer by now. You're on a short leash. Come on. Pretty sure that's elk or a big deer. That is a mesa. It's one of the few last mesas going north here. Everything kind of turns to that more sharp crag, alpine type peak. But that is still high desert there. It's mesa. Big gorge here. That's an old one, huh? Diet Pepsi, maybe 90s, maybe 80s, don't know. Glass holds up though. All these seasons, this glass is holding up. Old fire pit here. Coors, Rocky Mountain beer, still golden here. Cool. Yeah, a bunch of old ones. 
and nonetheless it's litter litter that becomes almost like artifact This is a hen turkey feather. It's spring turkey season here in Colorado. I didn't get my tag this year. I got them last year and I couldn't film them. Turkey is, best way to hunt turkey people tell me is to just call them in, kind of sit and wait. And I don't have that kind of patience for hunting. I like to hike and, you know, explore. And this is a spring molt shed. So they'll shed these uh, feathers during the spring, after winter. And these are our hens. The toms are way prettier. They have a lot of colors, but the hens are like this. And you can't really tell if they're a hen or a tom until they fly. So if you're a good hunter, you would see it fly, see the tom feathers and then take a tom. Otherwise you can take a hen that has a full belly of eggs and mess with, with the, you know, the generations of turkey. But yeah, this is a bearded turkey hen feather. Back at camp, total hike was 10.5 miles. So I decided that I'm gonna go back home. This series I've been doing kind of like one day, two day trips. This is gonna be a three day trip. But I think it'd be better if I just kind of go random, you know, three day trip here, four day trip here, one day trip here, whatever. Just read my uh, notifications and we have a red flag warning here for fire restrictions. So fire restrictions go in effect at midnight tonight. And right now we have a very serious wind and I don't feel like we could fire in this ship mess right now. So, this is going to be a two-night overland trip. Got a lot of content anyway while I was here, so. But not much to do in this uh, plateau here. No aspen, kind of, you know, homo homogeneous, mostly pine, mostly adler. Not much interesting, cool stuff. So, <clears throat> I decided I'm going to go home early. Gonna go, I was going to go for three nights and go back tomorrow morning, but I think I'm just going to pack up and go home now. Yuf, I gave Yuf two breaks today when I came back to the truck and with Gypsy. Yuffie got out and now she's out again somewhere around here. So dogs had a good time. They've been out since like five o'clock in the morning and let them out, so. But yeah, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I'm gonna clean up my camp now. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching, appreciate it. Big girls. You guys want to go home? My battery's dead too. All my batteries, I had four extra batteries for the phone. So even if I wanted to stay, I would be, hit. I would be having no content to record because my battery's dead. Yeah, this is fun, fun two nights. But before we leave, you just gonna get a little swimming, get a little cool down. She was a good girl, hanging out in the truck, maintaining her hip. Good job, big girl. Big girl. That's my big girl. Champ. It's the champ. That's my big girl. All right, everybody's antlers have been shed. Wonder where they are. Get out of here. You gotta be scared of people. Get out of here. Get out of here. Oh, get out of here. Get out of here. Yeah, the more curious they are, the more likely they'll be shot during hunting season. If they see humans and they book, it's a good sign. Like, those guys were offering me their broadside, literally, for a shot. 
it was hunting season. So, <clears throat> you know, keep them away from people. Keep away from people, you'll live, dear. <laughs>